we are happy to have you back as we enter the second quarter of the Moon Challenge. The Moon has been changing drastically over the past week and between day 8 and 9, the illumination has suddenly crossed the 50% mark. Now the Moon is no longer a crescent but a waxing gibbous. We will talk about these shapes a little more in detail in the subsequent episodes. I'm sure you enjoyed looking at the beautiful moon of day 9. One of our viewers, Revati Dokhe, has shared this lovely picture with us. I feel like featuring it here because it has been taken with very simple equipment. Well, by simple, I mean a 5-inch telescope, which is a reflecting, maybe a Newtonian kind, and a 20 millimeter eyepiece. These are pretty standard for amateur astronomers and I would prescribe newcomers to this field to go for such sizes and focal lengths. This is the minimum that you should invest in if you are interested in doing any kind of good observations. To top it, Revati has used her mobile phone camera to click this amazing picture with the features visible so sharp and clear. It would be unbelievable that a mobile camera could give such an image, but it is true and therefore don't despair if you don't have a DSLR camera or so and you can always use very basic telescopes with simple eyepieces, align your camera to the eyepiece properly and click such a picture. I congratulate Revati on giving us this example. It seems it's a day of experiments. So our regular contributor Anirudh has shot the moon on day 9 with a point and shoot camera. That too seems to give really good results since the moon is a very big object and even small telescopes can give very good resolution on it. I hope this inspires you to start your own moon photography project with your own telescopes. Before we start talking about the details of this image, I would like to remind you of the directions. Today we are looking at the image slightly differently and probably in the future pictures I will share the image in a more upright way. So the top would be north, this side is east on the moon and this would be the south. We would divide it conveniently so that the features could be properly shared with you. I have one more interesting thing to share with you and that is about the Terminator on the moon. No, I'm not talking about the science fiction character. I'm talking about a real lunar Terminator line. This is the line which divides the night and day side of the moon. As you can see, this area that we have been enjoying all the features on is the shadow area. This gives the best contrast since the edges of all these craters and other features become visible very well. Well, this has a name and it is called the Terminator. In particular, the Lunar Terminator. There are some interesting things to know about Terminators. One of the reasons why we have such a sharp edge of the moon and the features on the Terminator are visible so clearly is because the moon does not have an atmosphere. If you saw the Terminator on the Earth's surface, it would be really fuzzy. The atmosphere scatters light on a significant area across the Terminator of the Earth. And therefore, we have such amazing twilights in these areas on the Earth where the sunlight can still reach despite it being below the horizon. On the Moon, there is no twilight. You would see the sun rise directly and it would be day. The Terminator on day 9 is particularly important because it kind of marks the prime meridian of the moon. Yes, the moon also needs to have coordinate system like the earth because we need to find places and they need to be given coordinates. Every coordinate system will have its own zero. On the earth we have the Greenwich meridian. However, on the moon we have to fix some place and therefore it is fixed as the line which divides the moon into two halves. We'll discuss on one of the days why we see the same face of the moon all the time. 
but due to this fact we can divide the moon's face into two halves and take the line through the middle to be the zero meridian you may realize that on day 9 the co meridian will coincide with the terminator therefore this kind of gives us an idea of where the zero degree longitude of the moon lies perpendicular to that joining the east and the west is the equator of the moon now let us zoom into the various latitudes of the moon visible to to the north we will remember the cold mare frigoris and the new mare vaporum that we have seen yesterday there's a new sea becoming visible now which is the mare imbrium the sea of rains it is a largish area on the moon and will be seen better as the terminator moves more towards the west currently at about half of its uh, area visible we can see the three mountain ranges enclosing it three is also the number of important ancient greek philosophers and scientists who are named in this area so we have plato more to the north in between is archimedes and at the bottom is eratosthenes all of them played a great role in developing the philosophy of nature and also in various kinds of observations which led to the development of modern science as we move to the south we have another sea becoming visible and again keeping with the theme we have the sea of clouds the mare numbia you will see more of this as well when the terminator shifts to the west now i told you that the prime meridian passes through this region joining the north and the south pole of course you can draw any line on the surface of the moon joining the north and the south pole however you also need it to pass through a third point to represent a particular meridian which will be called as the zero degree longitude now this point on the moon happens to be this tiny crater called moshtin yes it is this little crater which has to be joined to the south and the north to get the zero degree longitude you can see how insignificant things can also have a very big importance further south we have two very large areas on the moon deslandres and clavius clavius and deslandres happen to be the second and the third biggest craters on the moon both of them are beyond 200 kilometers across the largest crater bailey is still in the shadows finally we also have two astronomy references in this frame we have a crater named after william herschel the prolific astronomer who in his times tried to build the world's largest telescopes he was also the discoverer of the planet uranus much earlier in history there was another prolific observer tycho brahe and this important crater named after him signifies his important role in collecting data about the skies do keep a look out for tycho as it is going to be one of the hero craters on the surface of the moon as it starts getting more and more light from the sun just to make the suspense deeper i would tell you that i can actually see evidences of the impact which created tycho even now without it being too much in the light i'll tell you more about them when we get to see it in better light literally so thank you for being here with us on this episode we will bring to you more fun and more facts about the moon to share your experiences with us tag us with hashtag moon challenge or send your pictures and experiences to our email see you again on day 10